What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Saint CJ, and this is the third episode of the Overcoming series. Now, today I have someone very special, and I know I always say everyone's very special, but this person is very, very special to me. This is like my closest brother in Christ, my brother in arms, my family. This guy is just amazing, and I love him so much. And this is the amazing Josiah Oluwale, Joe Soldier. I want to make Christian Joe. I'm a Joe rapper, baby. The main How you doing, man himself. <laughs> How you doing, King? Great, man. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very, very well, man. So tell the people about yourself, man. Who are you? And yeah, what do you do? So currently I'm a law student. Cheers. Um, and um, I'm, I'm desperately trying to not just hear God's bass, but avoid it. Uh, um, but um, not just hear God's voice, but obey it. Pardon me. <laughs> um, yeah. Literally, that's all. That's me. Yeah, I'm working behind the scenes in the Christian um, music industry uh, with people like yourself. Yes, uh, guys, I'm yeah. man. So sick. Love this guy. Super dope, man. Love yes, that. Amen. So Hit yeah, me, bro. Anyone, what is it? Hit me, bro. Hit me, bro. <laughs> he's ready, fam. He's obviously he's, he's militant. He's a soldier. He's actually Joe Soldier. He's militant with this. He's ready. He's on the ball. So yeah, just a little overview before we start of what this is, if you don't know already, um, the Overcomer series is a series that I've created that I felt God put on my heart to mm. basically put together all the closest people to me and people that have been pivotal in my life and to them to share their stories of all that God has done in their lives and how they've overcome and how now you can overcome too in your life. Um, so whatever you're going through, whatever you may face, just to know that you can conquer through Christ. And that you can now walk into destiny and walk into purpose. So I pray it will empower some people and touch some people as well. So make sure to share it to everyone you know. And make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more content as well. And yeah, so let's get Please support this brother. Please support this brother. Please support this brother. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much, bro. So first question is, first question is, well, second question because I've already asked something about. But tell people your story. How did you find Christ? Uh, and what do you do as well? Well, not easy, but how did you find Christ? And yeah. Um, wow. Um, I'm continually seeking him, but I gave my life to Christ when I was four years old. I was, on, I was with my mum and uh, she brought down the gospel to me and I understood. And from then on, it was a matter of uh, uh, overcoming trials and tribulations and um, times of faithfulness and unfaithfulness to God. But even when we're faithless, he remains faithful. Amen. So my story is more a matter of, you know, God showing his, himself strong when I've been weak. And that's literally what my name means. You know, Josiah, um, the transliteration in Hebrew is Yoshiyahu, which literally just means God is my support. And that's my story, bro. Um, whether, yeah, and, 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 and there's, there's loads of anecdotes that I could go into, but fundamentally, it's the Lord is my support. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. And that's that's profound that you just you know you gave a life to Christ at four years old. That's so beautiful, that's powerful. That's really, really powerful. And the fact that you know your name means the Lord is your support, and he really has been your support, bro. And I've seen yeah. that firsthand in your life. So tell the people more in detail about that because there's something obviously very uh, profound about your life, which is that you have a very um specific and very um like would you say it's rare condition? You say it's quite yeah, extremely rare medical. Yeah, yeah, so I've got a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is one specific area where God's been my support. That's with my medical condition. So uh, I've got this rare genetic disease called um. Well, I was diagnosed with. Careful yeah. with my wording. Um, this rare genetic disease called mucopolysaccharidosis, and um, just from the interview, boom. Uh, and uh, literally, when I was uh, I got diagnosed when I was like eight or nine years old, and um. Basically, that meant that my I have a missing enzyme and that my bones would kind of degrade over time. Wow. And yeah, so literally with my condition. So when I was 19, I had my hip replacement. Uh, and it was really interesting. There's a, um, a man who, who's a really close family friend, um, missionary guy, uh, who gave this specific word, must have hip operation. Uh, and... Um, out of, you know, just obedience. Because originally I was at a place where like, nah, I don't need no medicine. I don't need no this. I don't need that. Really stubborn and hard-hearted. Um, uh, and um, yeah, but I, I submitted. And around the time when my hip collapsed, 
this is the time a year after I asked for my operation to get done my hip my hip was basically collapsed um and so I had it done at the perfect timing uh, and that's that's you know that's God so God is so so stronger Amazing. yeah incredible incredible even in uh yeah even his grace for putting me in um a private NHS ward and uh yeah and, I remember um, that was powerful yeah, he visited me bro yeah man yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, that's when we met that's when we first actually like properly became friends when I visited yeah, you yeah 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 that's mad yeah man so God is faithful man and, and, and in my literally similar to how Paul says you know in my weakness God's strength has been made perfect and I've seen that true with um, just his provision for me opportunities for me his character development uh, you know having a medical condition like this where your bones are aching all the time you wake up stiff in the morning and it's pain um, you know it, creatures, it teaches you uh, patience um, it makes you humble mm. uh, especially as a young man you want to be stronger and da 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 da, da. Uh, it makes you it really humbles you and um it also lets you grow in empathy because as you're in pain, you start to become more vigilant and perceptive to when other people are in pain. So yeah. God's really used me to tune into other people. Um, and yeah, I've also matured my character. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really powerful, bro. What you just said about the empathy thing because it's just profound how you feel so much pain, but because you feel pain, you cannot empathize with pain. Like that's quite a, uh, it's just quite a profound statement because many people feel like, they, they, they will understand people's pain without going through pain. Like, mm. I was always something that I said that to understand rejection, you have to be rejected. Otherwise, you won't know what that feels. You can say, yeah, I get it, but you won't actually get it. Like, you yeah. know, I remember when I was like, you know, would confide in people that had sick parents. And it was only when my mom got sick that I realized what that felt like. I was like, mm. I'm actually praying for this family member. I'm actually praying for you properly. Not just because of like, I'm a Christian, I should pray for you because I understand. Or when yeah. you lose somebody, or when you're in financial want, when you understand what people are going through, you can actually yeah. empathize them more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad you mentioned that because even with loss, like um, mm. when I was two years old, my father was shot in the heart, mur murdered, as you know. Said yeah. it for the people listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And God has shown Himself to be a father to me. You know, He's raised up different men to to, to pass to my heart, and um, and He He yeah. Himself has fathered me. Um, as I read the Word and seek Him, and and and, and He talks to me and He teaches me and yeah, wow. and he's granted me wisdom. He's used people to come and speak to me, and he's just fathered me. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. God is a father to the fatherless, and he, mm -hmm. I'm a testament to that, you know? Amen. That's, I'm actually getting really touched during this interview, you know? Like, it's very, um, yeah, it's very deep, man. It's powerful. It's powerful that God is a father to the fatherless, 100%, bro. So, so my question actually is, like, you know, how was it? living with this condition how was it you know the whole thing when, when it went down with your dad like how were you able to heal like you seem like right now you're quite healed you're quite um restored even though you've gone through a lot of brokenness in your life like how how were you practically able to overcome those feelings of loss feelings of pain feelings of you know those feelings that you felt mm. <sighs> To be honest with you, um, it's not necessarily as much that, um, obviously you get healed, but you know, if you've had damage somewhere, you know, there can still be some, if you apply pressure to it, you know, it's still, yeah, 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 still yeah. pain. Yeah, yeah, of but, course. Um, of course. But I think the, the peace mm. that has come, and, and even now I still have like pain in my body and stuff, so it complains of in my, course, with my medical condition. Yeah, yeah, so, of course, of course. Um, significantly reduced after the operation. Um, but ultimately, I think it's been a perspective shift, bro. Um, it's been a perspective shift. Uh, you look at, if, if, you, if you think what I've gone through is persecution, look at the people in Acts, bruv. You look at Stephen. Mm. As man was about to get stoned to death, <laughs> he looked up at heaven and just like glorified Jesus. I see Jesus at the right hand, throne of God. And he just looked up at heaven for him. It's like the more we gaze heavenward, the less, the less earthly troubles matter. Um, wow. it's, not as, it's not as much as oh yeah now I'm, I'm feeling all good and stuff it's just me I'm just like like it's not about it's not about um, my medical condition it's not about my pain it's not about um, the fact that you know my father was murdered it's, it's like trusting that hey my, my earthly father's in heaven thank god that's, that's, that's brilliant enough because um, yeah because he was saved um, uh, 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 but but like that God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose 
And it's like, even in my father's death, I, I don't know, like, like I can come up with these justifications. Like, you know, if he was still around, maybe I'd be a complacent Christian because I wouldn't have this kind of missing thing that I need to seek God as of my father. But, but like, yo, like, I, I know that in, 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 in like, a, like, a, like a seed that dies, uh, it, it, go, it dies, it literally is buried when you plant a seed and then it grows up into crop you know, and multiplies into a different crop and wheat. And, and that's just, a, that's one of these mysteries that God's designed for earth. And so we need to change the way we look at, um, we look at uh, life and the hardships that come in life. And, mm-hmm. and when the rain falls, you know, it's, it's, it may feel it's cold, wet and uncomfortable, but fam, like it, wat- it waters and nurtures, bruv. We need yeah. to change the way we, we look at earth because there are, there are seasons we go through and and they they strengthen us as we overcome. Wow. Uh, the psalm that I uh, that was given to me, prophetically, and it's a beautiful psalm, and and then God spoken to me through it thousands of times, like countless times. Uh, uh, the ones I have on my dog tags, even uh, Psalm eighteen verse thirty three. He maketh my feet like the feet of a deer, and sets me upon my high places. And um, bruv like specifically speaking with my medical condition that was like a, a faith statement but what's more it speaks of being an overcomer you know and and by his grace he makes my feet like the feet of a deer you know he yeah. makes me yeah. to walk on these high places you yeah. know if you look at the mountain days i love watching nature programs and stuff and I'm, I'm even sat in the garden now i love watching nature programs and <laughs> and uh and like you see these deers that are climbing up these mountains it's like boom 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 like steep you know, you can't do that without deer's feet. And God, God, God designed those feet and God will give you like this hind feet to overcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, really, I think, I think um, as Christians, we should, the, the goal isn't just to be a Christian, but it's to be an overcomer, you know, and, ah, and, uh, come on. and, and to, to, become, to, to overcome and, and to persevere, you know. Um, yeah, man. And then as an act of worship, we'll cast our crowns at his feet because, yo, he's the worthy one, you know what I mean? But uh, Wow. Yeah, man. Wow. That's, a foot, specifically. that's heavy, bro. That's heavy. That's really heavy. Like, that's hit me. I don't even know what to say. Like, that's just, wow. That hit me profound. Profoundly hit me. Like, that was deep. All I can say is that's deep because it's so real what you said. Like, the thing about perspective. Because many times, and I talk about it in my book, many times Christians feel like God's just going to take away your problems and that's when you overcome it. He won't. He'll refine your character in the midst of your Mm. sorrows. He'll refine your character Mm. in the midst of your tribulations because God didn't, God didn't remove, God didn't remove Paul's thorn. He just gave him the ability to endure it and then take the point in it. It It's just perspective. It's just perspective. When you change your perspective, it all comes from, that's when you overcome. Because that's why the Bible even talks about the mind, renewing your mind daily with the word, because mm. your mind can always be filled with the lies of life and your current circumstances. But the first act of faith is seeing things that are unseen, is believing in the things that are unseen. So when actually faith is blind, you have to close off what you're seeing and just believe in what God is saying. That's when you have faith. So I think, yeah. You know what, you know what else, yeah? Mm. you know what i don't even want to say it's blind it's like because it's because it, that because yes it, yes because because it takes a level of blindness because yeah. you know it's faith in the belief belief in the things that are unseen right yeah. Yeah, but then yeah. you've got to you've got to acknowledge the fact that the people who had faith like when it talks about i think in hebrews 11 i know in hebrews 11 um we, we, we read in hebrews as a family um oh, but yeah. uh uh what's it called we um you look at like 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 abraham yeah, man, man was, man was uh, looking at the fact that he was of a particular age and his wife was of a particular age. Yeah, yeah. And so you're it? seeing reason to doubt. So it's not just blind, it's about, it, it's like seeing what, yeah. what's on, oh no, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to do that uh, with my fingers, but uh, it's like seeing what's on, <laughs> seeing what's on earth, but then being like, trust, but still trusting on what God says. Yeah, yeah. Still trusting on on heavenly yeah. truths and that 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 manifest in in, in on earth because he yeah. because she bore a child she bore a yeah. child yeah it's 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 blindness to it's blindness to physical sight and openness to your spiritual sight 
You get me? It's, 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 mm-hmm. That's what it is, the shift. So it's, as you said, it's not blindness entirely. It's closing your, yourself off to what you see in the physical and knowing mm-hmm. by and looking at things in the spiritual. And the spiritual mm-hmm. said, the dead situation, the dry mm-hmm. bones of an army. Mm-hmm. I'm alone, but the heaven angels are, are behind me. I'm, I, you know, I mean, physically you can't see it, but in the spirit you can see it. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, that this mountain is right there in front of me, but it's removed spiritually. So it is, mm-hmm. it is definitely that thing about faith is, is, is seeing and trusting what God says, and that's what you see. Only mm-hmm. what God says about the situation. Only what mm-hmm. God's perspective is of the situation. If God says that situation is not over, it's not over. Even if everything mm-hmm. else says it's over. If God says you're 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 blessed, even when your life looks like a curse, you're yeah. blessed. So yeah. it's it's really really profound. It's really yeah. powerful as well what you said. And what's more, we have assurance of we have assurance of. <sighs> I think it's in um, I know it's in Isaiah. I don't know which part. I think it's Isaiah sixty, mm-hmm. um, uh, verse fourteen, I believe. But um, it talks about. Uh, it just gives a beautiful picture of like the restoration of like of like the, you know, like a new Jerusalem, that, that, yeah. that, that new, yeah. you know, how God is going to restore what mm. it's going to look like. And I know that was a literal speech, but I mean, I mean, we're looking at prophecy towards heaven as well. Like so no more fight. In the Old Testament. No fighting, before yeah. Jesus even came. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. So good, man. Wow. That's when you overcome when you start seeing things the way God sees things. There's one, there's a really pivotal thing I remember that God showed me when I wrote in the book. And he said, what God taught me from growing pains, and I think it's profound about this, it's very important to this, it's very um, specific to growing pains because my one went through a similar thing with her back where she had a mm. final clot and she lost the ability to be able to walk. So she went, and I remember Josiah would come and he would comfort my mom and tell her, I couldn't walk and I can walk now. God can heal you. I always speak to her and always pray for her and always encourage her because I'd seen Josiah overcome this and be able to still go through pain but still have victory and knew my mom could do the same. Yeah. And even now, my mom could do things she couldn't do before. Like she's gardening. <laughs> what the heck? Wow. Like if she couldn't do that before. She couldn't even move. So now God is, that's what I'm saying. God is a miracle worker. We know this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember there was something I said in the book that God gave me to say. I didn't say it was God. But he said, growing pains meant that he won't take away the pains, but he will find you and shape you and mold you through the pain. And he will give you a new mind, a new perspective and a new heart during that pain. That's what wow. God will do. Because so so like to literally overcome, growing. <laughs> to, to, yeah. to overcome isn't just when, every, as again, it's not when everything changes. Oh, I overcame sickness when I'm now, when I'm, when I'm not sick anymore. No, 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 no. You overcome sickness when you don't allow your sickness to stop you from your dest- from doing your destiny. Mm. Oh, I've over- uh, you know, just because <laughs> you don't you don't get faith or become bold when fear goes away. It's when you're mm. able to n- not allow the feeling of fear to cripple you anymore. Your ne- fear's never going to go away. It's a natural thing that goes put inside of us to have fear. Mm. But it's about how do I not allow fear to run my life? Mm. I mean, people think that they're going to overcome lust when lust goes away. But lust is, is in our sin nature. But the moment that you change your perspective and say, no, I'm not going to lust because I know that God has said that, this, that lust is, not, is, the way of, is a perverted way to see people. I'm going to see people for the beauty that they are in, as a child of God. And then you won't lust them over them. You'll appreciate their beauty. You know, mm-hmm. it's not taking away that that makes you overcome. It's when you're, you're, God changes you in the midst of that. You know, the Hebrew boys, the Hebrew, yeah, when they, the Hebrew men, the three Hebrew men, the Hebrew boys, when they went into the fire, it was not, the fire wasn't taken away from them. That's when they overcame. Oh, the fire just went away. No, they went into the fire, but the fire wasn't able to have an effect on them because of their perspective was so, they had so much faith in God that even if they burnt, they knew that God loved them. They knew that they wouldn't bow to the idols. Yeah. And because yeah, yeah. Their perspective even if we perish. They would, they, they, the fire was around them, but it's like they came out and it's like, wow, well, didn't you just go through fire? It's like, yeah, we did just go through fire. God didn't, God didn't take away the fire, just that the fire didn't affect me. But, you know, did, weren't you abused growing up? Well, didn't your dad leave you? Didn't, you know, like I said, didn't your dad get shot? Didn't, didn't you have, don't you have a physical disability? Why are you so happy? Why are you so content? Why have you got so much peace? 
it's not that God didn't take those things away. He hasn't taken away your sickness. He didn't take away the fact that your dad's passed away. But he's been able for you to be able to see things from a whole new perspective where those things don't mm-hmm. those things don't cripple you anymore. They might still be painful. They might they they definitely are still painful. I can you know that that's obviously gonna be there because those things are they're hard things to deal with. But God's been able to help you to heal and be able to look at those things and say, but yet I will take joy in the Lord. Yet I will bless the Lord. Yet I will praise the Lord. And that is more powerful. I think it's more powerful when God allows something to be there or allows that to be part of your story, but yet you're not defined by it, <clears throat> than to take it all away. Because if he takes it all away, then there's no real story. There's no real victory. If he doesn't take it away and he lets you then be restored through it, that's more powerful. Jesus, Jesus could have taken away our sins without dying. He could have. He's, he's, you know, God could have just taken away our sins through taking away our sins. He could have just done it. But why did he allow Jesus to die? Why did Jesus have to die? To show even in the brokenness, even of the brokenness of a man. The wisdom of God. The brokenness of man can bring forth the glory of God. The, your brokenness can give God glory. Your, your abuse, your rejection, your pain, your struggles, all of this can give God glory because the greatest thing in the world and the greatest thing of, of all time that gave God glory was Jesus being crucified on that cross yeah. and his blood being poured out. That gave God the most glory ever. And that was the most gruesome, horrible thing that ever happened in history, really. So that's, that's yeah, it's powerful, man. Praise God. Wow, this is deep. Wow. Praise God, man. Wow. I think this is bringing a lot of healing to people, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tissa. Bless you, bro. Bless you, bro. So the next question is, right, um, what advice would you give to your younger self? Obviously, you've gone through a lot. Like, you know, I mean, you had a hip replacement and now you can do what you couldn't do before. You can drive, which is amazing. And you even were given a car for like a hundred pounds, right? That was worth seventeen grand or something. Yeah, fam. Thank God for the motability scheme, brother. Like that was like, just the access, like this. Yeah, man. Incredible, man. You know what I mean? And it's like you said, shares his story. Goes on little retreats, you know, these little conferences where they talk about it, and it's really powerful, man. You know what's doing in your life, man. Your excellence, your gift in words, has your excellence is incredible, bro. Like that's excellent, man. So yeah, what would you tell your younger self? I think if there's um, I think if there's anything I tell my younger self, it's mm-hmm. stay in humility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I was just, I, it's so funny you asked me this question because literally yesterday I was like plowing through pages of my journal. Uh, uh, I kept a journal since I was twelve, and just you know hearing my thoughts and uh, and just kind of seeing my perspective was really insightful for myself. But I think if there's one overarching theme. And I've learned this over time, over the years, and just through falling flat on my face and being exhausted, like literally, like mm-hmm. not ex- and, like exhausted and tired, isn't it? Like being like exhausted of all your strength, you know, yeah, in yeah. the literal sense of like, yeah. being drained uh, of all your capabilities. Stay in humility, like um, God is capable. Um, mm-hmm. uh, God is the author of He authored salvation, bruv. He wrote the book of salvation. Yeah. Like, yeah, stay in humility. Um, so good. Yeah, yeah man, stay in humility. Stay in humility. Stay in humility, bro. Cause, and because, like, um, like, God's wisdom was imparted onto me from a very young age. Because, mm. uh, I, I mean, like, and, I can, I, and I know that to be true, but as I'm going back to my old, like, 14-year-old self, I'm like, wow, this is good stuff. And it's just, like, God speaking um and, and you can just see god's like it's literally like this because it's like literally god's wisdom being placed on someone you know you look at uh yeah, man. yeah man, god 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 gives wisdom uh like james says he'll give it to the book of james sorry the letter of james um the new testament for those who um yeah it talks about how god will give you wisdom to, if you ask for it believe or not doubt you know yeah. he'll give it freely without reproach so and that's that's what i got and i'm reading that and it's like but sometimes in your in when you're thinking in your wisdom and your your, you know, your <clears throat> reveling in your thoughts, you can, yeah, you can miss, you can overlook things like heart and character. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Literally, in 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 previous episodes, I was talking to my friend Golden about that. That character's everything. 
Yeah, but self-control, bro. Self-control, self-discipline. Mm. Or being disciplined by God, you know. These are, like, especially in lockdown, like, God's been... I used the word chastise before, but like, cause I mean, in the sense of like beating the chaff out of something. So I mean, in like the agricultural sense, but I mean like really whipping me with discipline, especially with these assignments I've been doing, like whooping my backside, just put me in place. Like, yeah, man. Like even like, like now at six o'clock, I need to go, go to hit my study sooner or later, but no, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. Uh, uh, cool, cool. We're running, we're running, we're running. I'm, 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 I'm released, I'm released for this interview. Um, oh, crazy. Praise you, Lord. Praise Amen. you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Same my younger self. Stay in humility. And like, you know, because really it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's God that told me everything else I needed at the time in the right season. So I just stay humble, you little squish pot. Yeah, man. No matter <laughs> how big and squishy, no matter how squashy you get, man. How, so, so it's my code word. Squashy is older. How much squashy you squishy get? Squishy. I never forget about yeah, it. Yeah, man. Yeah, whatever how squashy you get, stay squishy, man. Stay, stay, stay little, stay humble. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, <laughs> sorry, last question is um, last two questions. But last uh, major question uh, is: What advice would you give to to somebody that's in your situation that has maybe a rare condition or has suffered with it for many years? What advice would you give them to and how they can continue to endure and continue to have faith even in the midst of their pain? I'm going to ask you to repeat the question. Repeat the question? Okay. Um, what advice would you give somebody in your position, say, that maybe has the same condition as you or a similar condition um, or any sort of physical illness and has lost uh, a loved one close to them? Uh, or either or, or this all together. Uh, and what advice would you give them on how to get through that and how to still have faith and trust God even in the midst of their pain? God loves you and God has not forgotten about you. Wow, so good. So good. Wow. <laughs> Simple. God loves you and God has not forgotten about you. Bible says he never leaves you nor forsakes you. So that's real. That's real, man. That's beautiful. So simple, but yeah, so good. Amen. So final question is anybody watching this, you know, that that's not a Christian. They don't believe in God. We're talking about Jesus a lot, talking about the Bible a lot. And to them, it just might be gibberish or whatever. Uh, and they might have their preconceptions of who God is and who Jesus is. What would you say to those people? I don't believe in Jesus. Um, I'd say Jesus is the destination. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because um, when it's a, when it comes to relationship, the way you, the way you get there the way you get there. Jesus is the way, you know, mm. it's not about next. Uh, it's not as much about the next process and journey of like achievement or getting somewhere. It's about him because the, the, the difference between earth and heaven is, is like the fullness of the presence of God, mm. you know, cause we, we see in part now, we prophesy in part now. And yeah, we, we've got, we've got the Holy spirit living inside of us. But I mean, of course, outside we're lights because he's inside of us. We are light. We are light here yeah, yes, um, so. in, a, in a dark world, you know. So that's it's not contradictory because he's present inside of us. But I mean, in terms of the f like the fullness, in terms of like, every, like everything that surrounds us and and being one with him, being the bride uh, of Christ, I'd, I'd say, um, you know, Jesus is that destination. You look at like married couples. It's not about the couple going somewhere. It's about mm -hmm them being with each other so i wouldn't be any different with christ in the church you know yeah. he is because it says he's the way yeah man but yeah, so, jesus is my destination amen. jesus is, this is where you where you want to be going to you know mm -hmm. he's a he's a destination that's so good jesus is the destination so any one of you that doesn't believe in jesus right now know that he's the destination and that truly he's the way either way it's everything you're searching for 
Mm. He's every like like you like. I personally have filled my life with all sorts. Even even like literally growing up in a Christian home. Um, to be sincere with you, like and and um and not pursuing God with my full heart at times, you know, um, and and pursuing idols literally, you know, like you you can name it the love you can name it the love of money, um, uh, you know, the list goes on profusely, even like um uh, like luxury or comfort or yeah, like and and what I what the only thing that's ever brought me satisfaction. Um, within my heart of worship is Jesus. Amen. Oh, and uh, yeah, so sincerely. That's enough of me speaking. Praise God. So, so beautiful, man. No, it's so, so good. Yes, anybody right now, you're watching this video, you don't know who Jesus is. I do this at, er at the end of every video because it's always an opportunity for someone to give their lives to Christ. And like my brother just said so greatly, greatly said was, nothing else satisfies. Nothing else will ever satisfy you but Jesus. You can look everywhere else in the world, but the only thing that can satisfy you is Jesus. And maybe hearing our stories, you can hear, wow, Jesus actually did something profound in their lives. So I'm going to say a prayer right now, and then my brother yeah. will end us in prayer. I mean, that will be this episode. But thank you again, sir, for taking your time to, to come and share your testimony and what was done in your life. And literally, bro, like, thank you for taking time, even to stay the study break, because I know you're grinding hard. So thank you again, man. So Love you, you very much, man. Prayer. Love you too, bro. Um, I'm going to say this prayer. It should be after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died upon the cross for my sins. I pray today, Lord, Lord you enter Jesus, my heart. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I, I pray you come into my heart. I pray that you'll come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. That from this day. That from this day. Until the day I die. Until the day I die. I will serve you. I will serve you. And bring others to know you. And bring others to know you. Fill my life today. Fill my life today. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. So yeah, man. Yeah. But just before we go, um, you know, plug your socials so people can reach out to you, get to know about you more. So yeah. Um my my the social media that i'm plugging at the moment is at saint cj underscore um because that's where, where i want to put people onto i thought god uh yeah that's not speaking so yeah follow 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 the main guy at saint cj underscore and uh love yeah. my friend love my friend. <laughs> i'm right. gonna find him if you want to find desire i speak to him about more about his story i know he won't plug himself it's at Joe Soldier. That's J O and then Soldier. I'm going to change my hat now. I'm joking. Oh, I'm like. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm nah, joking. I mean, you connect with him. Uh, he has some music out on Spotify. You can check out as well on SoundCloud. His stuff he does now. And he's a producer. So if you need any support with music stuff, you can reach out to him. And, and yeah, thank you again, bro. Um, cool. Yeah, as yeah. well. Uh, if you've said that prayer, you can reach out to me or Josiah. We'd love to help you yeah. in your journey yeah. as well. So yeah, Absolutely. take the time and close us off with prayer. Thank you, God. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Father, that you don't want us to just be Christians, so to speak, but the fullness of that being overcomers. Amen. Lord, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you will make our feet like the feet of a deer and set us upon those high places that you want to put us on, Father. Help us to overcome the world. Lord, help us to strip off every weight that, uh, and every sin that so easily entangles us. Help us to drop all of that, Father. Help us to abandon those thoughts that, that don't lead, lead to uh, good produce. Lord, I ask that we will full-heartedly pursue you. Lord, I declare that we will, be a we will be a generation that will seek you and find you. Seek you of all our hearts and find you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Very much Love you very much. So guys, make sure if we do anything, to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, see you on the next episode. God bless. Stay safe. Peace and love. Everyone go cop the book. St. CJ. Love, love.